So this brings us to our next topic, pKa values. Now what in the world is a pKa value and why should you care? Well, the reason you should care is because I'm your teacher and I'm commanding you to do so, of course. <laughs> but seriously, you need to care. Seriously. Simply put, pKa values are numbers that tell us how acidic something is. Now, if you're one of those deep-thinking math-type people who's interested in a more profound mathematical explanation of what pKa values are, then I invite you to read section 1.17 from our textbook or visit me during my office hours. Here's the bottom line that I want you to know. The lower the pKa, the more acidic the proton in question. As pKa goes down, acidity goes up. Now let's examine that in the context of our previous problem. You noted in our previous problem that as we got atoms over here that were much more electronegative, fluorine being more electronegative than chlorine being much more electronegative than bromine being much more electronegative than just hydrogens, we noted that because these uh, more electronegative atoms suck electrons towards themselves, they increase the acidities of the resulting hydrogens. Hence, we would expect the pKa values to decrease going left to right. And indeed, we see that they do. Remember, pKa values, as they go down, that means that the acidity of the proton goes up. So the lowest pKa value on this slide is the one over here on the right, which means that this is the most acidic proton, which should make sense because it is neighbored by a fluorine, which is the most electronegative and hence the most sucky of all of these different options. Here's a very simple pKa table from our text. In showing you this, I am requiring you, my students, to memorize the pKa values that I've highlighted here in the red boxes. Remember that if you have an oxygen that has a, at least one hydrogen on it and then some other stuff, that oxygen is positively charged, either here in a protonated alcohol or protonated water, the pKa is going to be less than zero. Contrastingly, a hydrogen that's stuck to this type of oxygen, this is an oxygen that's immediately stuck to a carbon that's double bonded to an oxygen, this is a carboxylic acid hydrogen, has a pKa of around 5. And if I'm just talking about a hydrogen that's stuck to an oxygen that's just stuck to a boring carbon chain, or an oxygen that's just stuck to two hydrogens, as in water or an alcohol, we're talking about a pKa of 15. Now one thing I have to specify that I don't think I have before is what this R represents. Anytime we talk about R groups in organic chemistry, what we're really saying is just boring old chain of carbons and hydrogens with nothing exciting in them. So once again, I want to emphasize these three things that I put in boxes are the things that I want you guys to be able to memorize their pKa values of. And now for our final topic of the day, where we're going to address the question in an acid-base equilibrium reaction. How do we know which side of the reaction is favored? Before answering this question, I have to remind you once again, the lower the pKa, the higher the molecule's acidity. Got it? Well, if you don't, here's a little song. If pKa is low, acidity is mo. Now it helps if we put the oo at the end, because it really solidifies that in your brain. Now, keeping this fact in mind, you should realize that an acid with a lower pKa will be more acidic and hence more reactive. Here's one more detail you should remember. Excluding any external intervention, equilibrium reactions generally always favor the side of the reaction that gives the more stable slash less reactive stuff. So, which side of an acid-base equilibrium reaction is favored? The answer is whichever side has the higher pKa, that is, the less reactive acid on it. In other words, the reaction will shift away from the more reactive acid, that's the one that has the lower pKa, and it will shift toward the less reactive acid, which is the one that has the higher pKa. Let's apply this knowledge to a problem. Question 20 from our problem set says, for the following reaction, which side of the equation is favored? Reactants or products, and why? And here's another question, just for thought. The ammonium ion, whose structure is shown here, has a pKa of 9.25. And it has a lower pKa than the methyl ammonium ion shown here. Which is the stronger base, ammonia or methylamine? And explain. 
I now leave you with the ultimate question. What is the product formed from the following acid-base reaction? To answer this, you will have to use your knowledge of conjugate acids and bases, as well as use pKa values to determine which side of the reaction is favored in an equilibrium circumstance. Now, I invite you to consult sections 1.18 to 1.20 of our text, if needed. So that brings us to the end of today's lecture. I hope that it's been very enjoyable for you. I know that I've had a great time. Please stay tuned as we begin Chapter 2's lecture next week. Until then, have an enjoyable rest of your day.